Let's move to our focus for this morning. Bus rapid transport in Johannesburg has been around for almost a decade. It was meant to transform the public transport system with better capacity and reliability. However, there are still challenges there, which my partner in news, Gareth Edwards, continue to place the spotlight on. And, G, I mean, you are still uh, in science and continue with those important conversations around the BRT. Uh, and I suppose it's important because people are walking behind you. Uh, some are using, you know, taxis. Some will be using other alternatives. But the BRT... BRT, that particular public transport system was meant to transform and to be an affordable mode of transformation uh, in transportation rather. Yeah, it, yeah, it absolutely was. And you're quite right as we continue to watch uh, taxis streaming past me, people walking past our location uh, here in Catherine Street, Tumza, I think you've nailed it on the head. Uh, this would have been a fantastic alternative, the bus rapid transit system. And in fact, if you're going to choose an example, the one in Santon, the one right behind me here on Catherine Street, would have actually been a very, very good example. Why? Because obviously you would want to uh, be getting people into what some would deem the richest square mile in the country. This is where a lot of businesses operate. This is where a lot of employment can take place. And this would have been an ideal station for those who are trying to make their way into Santon. From here, they may have been able to either walk to their work destination or perhaps catch a lift with someone. But these rapid, these rapid transit routes were meant to travel from areas as far as Alexandra, uh, Alexandria into Santon, and from here go off to wherever you need to. But it hasn't quite worked. The one behind me, uh, standing in complete darkness, Let's bring you to the conversation, SA Bus Rapid Transit Association's uh, Mochele Noche. Mochele, good morning to you. Uh, I hope you're able to hear me okay. Just give me a sense of what's happening with BRT. It was all there. It was all working. But somehow, uh, the system has just fallen apart. What happened? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Gareth? Can you, can you see me and can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely, Mochela. I can hear. I can't see you. I'm in the field, uh, but I can hear you. Go ahead. Help me understand what happened with BRT. How did we get this so wrong? Thank you, Garrett. Um, I'm Mochela Noche, and I'm the chief executive officer of Phase One A, which is essentially the first BRT system in Johannesburg, which has its genesis in Soweto. Um, and you are obviously talking about the BRT system in Alexander, which is phase 1C. I think we've managed to do a, a splendid job. And I think the phase 1C is sort of, what? how can I call it? It's the third phase of the BRT system. And that obviously will have its, its own problems and its own genesis. But I think on our side, uh, the BRT in, in general has been a wonderful project which has allowed people to be ferried from the townships to the cities uh, at a cost-effective method. Um, you can l even look at the My City in Cape Town, which has been, I think, voted or acclaimed to be one of the best transport systems in Africa, for that example. So I think, yes, we do have our problems, but I think in general or holistically it has been a wonderful initiative uh, Mochele, help me understand that off the back of what you just said that it is a wonderful initiative it's certainly uh, we had the right idea as i watch a how train bus go straight past me what's happening in santon then i'm standing here on catherine street this brt station is closed there's fences around it there's safety fences there's one security guard i'm seeing taxis one of them just backfired welcome to joburg uh driving past us people walking past us but there's no one coming into this brt station so how is this seemingly effective for residents uh who want to get into santon so you must remember that the the system that you are looking at is the phase 1C system. It's the third system in the country. It was only literally promulgated, I think, a month or two ago. So you are looking at, how can I, to use a terrible analogy, like um, a newborn child. So this system is only, it's only been a month old in terms of activation, so whereas the phase 1A and phase 1B has been in transit for the past 10 years and phase 1B, I think, for the past almost seven years. 
So how then is the one behind me? And uh, I think we're talking about our focus, uh, Mochele, uh, of the rising costs. Give me then an understanding of uh, how important Rio Via and BRT is going to be with the costs of living going up. Uh, taxi fares are going up. Bus fares are going up. Where do you see BRT once a system like this uh, 1C, I think you called it, uh, is up and running? What difference is that going to make to consumers that use the system? Look, I think we offer a very reliable service. We have minimal mistrips um, in terms of the, you know, the, the price of petrol going up. We offer a cost-effective system. Um, yes, there are challenges, but I think from an economic perspective, we do bring almost like, for example, phase 1A brings almost a million people to the city on a monthly basis. Um, and you can even go to Togaza Park and look on your right where uh, Togaza Park is opposite Regina Mundi. You will see more than, I don't, more than, you know, 500 cars or 100 cars parked where we are offering a cost effective alternative to driving to and out of the city. Uh, you, you know, we can even talk about fuel emissions. We can talk about, um, how efficient we are and, and how how we offer a cheaper alternative. Mochele, let's uh, let's talk about one one more thing. I think before I say goodbye to you uh, this morning, Mochele. Uh, as I ask the question, I see two taxis driving past me. Help me understand how you're going to navigate and continue to navigate what is going to be undoubtedly friction between another public transport system competing with the likes of taxis, taxi industries, and other public bus systems. How are you going to navigate what is no doubt, and we've seen this uh, potential friction between BRT and the Taxi Association, for example, before I say goodbye. Okay, a quick one. Please understand that when where the BRT is involved, you as Gareth Edwards would have to give up 10 of your taxis for shares in a bus operating cap company. So there is no friction. It's almost a dilution. You are giving up 10 taxis, 100 taxis. Like in my instances, my stakeholders gave up... Uh, 347 taxis in exchange for shares in a bus company. So there's a dilution. It's not A competing against B. You're giving up one piece of the pie for another piece of the pie. Am I answering you correctly? Gareth? Are you not worried? Are you not worried? I'm sorry, there's a bit of a delay on the line, Michaela, forgive me. Are you not worried that there could be potential violence? No, I'm not worried about violence. Um, I'm not sure whether you got the first part of my feed when I said that you are giving up A for B. So you're giving up 10 taxis for 10 shares in a bus operating company, for example. So there is no friction. It's yeah. just a, a yeah. dilution. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking time to speak to us this morning. Uh, Mochele Noche, I appreciate uh, you taking time out uh, here on ENCA. Forgive the breakup in the line there. As you can hear, I'm trying to say goodbye to Mochele. I think he's struggling to hear me as well uh, from the SA uh, Bus Rapid Transit Association joining us. So uh, this is a new phase, I'm told, that is going to be kicking off. It's a new baby, I'm told. But right now, uh, it's not helping many residents in Santon at all. But the idea is there, as we have seen in years gone by. Uh, BRT telling us the system is working. People People are wanting to use it, but is how effective is it really, Tumza, as I come back to you, uh, for the majority of South Africans that are dealing with the increased cost of living? Is this really an alternative? Can it really compete with minibus taxis and other public buses? We'll have to wait and see, Tumelo. Yeah, absolutely, Gareth. I mean, you're at just one BRT station, right, uh, in Santon. There's so many more, whether it's in Soweto, um, you know, close to Auckland Park, on your way, you know, through to, uh, like I said, uh, Soweto, depending on which route you take. There are some that are vandalized, some that are not operational, uh, some that you could see that there's a bit of, uh, you know, uncertainty as to when they will actually be up and, you know, operating. And, of course, we'll have, uh, you know, some of our reporters the entire day uh, stationed to give us a picture and a look as to what exactly is the reality on the ground with those who do depend on these uh, BRT uh, systems. So thanks so much to my partner in news, uh, Gareth Edwards, Arden Santon, uh, out there speaking to, of course, Muchele Nore, SA Bus Rapid uh, Transit Association representative, uh, talking to us about particularly what they're doing uh, to ensure the smooth running of these BRT systems.